Okay, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I'm Komati Muyandi from University of Science Malaysia. I will be presenting my literature review paper, which is entitled Digital Image Correlation for Screen Measurement in Plastic Film Fluid Process. So before I proceed with the presentation today, I'd like to thank the Material Science and Technology Literature Review Prize 2019, the Institute of Materials, Minerals and Mining, and also the Taylor and Francis Group for accepting my paper and also selecting me as a top five finalist. Okay, my scope of review for today comprises an introduction, a brief introduction of the film growing process, the digital image correlation, and then the application of digital image correlation in polymer processing, and then followed by in my current research, which is in film growing process, and finally the acknowledgement. Okay, uh, what motivated me to do this research, which is uh, measuring the screen in the plastic growing, is the verification process um, for the quality of the film. Is, uh, is actually laborious and uh, uh, is, uh, it takes time and also is a waste of material because this film growing process is a lengthy process and then the time taken to verify uh, the quality of film which means once the film is produced and then it's sent to the quality department and then come back to the process it actually takes time, one or two hours and then that by the time the, the result is received is already few rolls being produced, which is about uh, one or two tons, just for an initial stage. So uh, the gap here is usually in the manufacturing field, they use the processing parameter to verify the quality. So the gap here is there is no direct measurement from the plastic itself, which will reduce the time uh, taken to verify the quality and also will reduce the waste uh, production. So the aim here is to uh, design uh, digital image correlation as a screen measurement tool uh, and then to come up with a quantitative correlation between the film deformation and also the film properties. Okay, uh, film growing process, it is the oldest process to manufacture plastic films and bags with varying uh, sizes. So this, it is a very simple process. Okay, where the, in the extruder, the polymer resin will be melted and then the molten polymer will be extruded out to the uh, dye and, and to form a tube and then the tube will be blown into larger diameter but uh, through this process uh, the, uh, uh, the melt will be flowing uh, from here to up it is taken up by the uh, nip rolls and then uh, flattened through the nip rolls and then make it as a plastic uh, it is ro uh, rolled as a plastic uh, rolls and then uh, the important stage here is the, from the dye to the stabilizing gauge, where in the uh, here here the polymer structure is randomly coiled, where there is no orientation. When it is pulled upward, the uh, polymer change will be oriented. Uh, in a uh, film growing process, the biaxial orientation, where the film will be uh, stretched in M D direction, which is the vision direction, and also in actual uh, transfer direction, which is in the hook direction. So. Uh, the polymer will experience the biaxial stretching, which is which controls orientation in the film, and this uh, orientation imparts um, controls the film uh, properties. Okay, so to measure the strain during the film growing process is very difficult because it's a lengthy process and it's very continuous. So you can't uh, place any uh, strain measurement tools on the surface of the film because the film itself is very uh, thin and it's moving fast. So if you place a uh, strain gauges like extensometers, it will break the sample, it will damage your sample. So that's the reason why we need a non-contact and non-destructive approach like uh, digital image correlation to measure the strain. So DIC is um, basically an optical method that used to measure the displacement and strain on a surface of a, a deforming material. So the basic principle here uses um, a gray, no, it compares a gray levels between the reference and current image. Reference is the uh, image before the deformation and current image is the after deformation. So basically uh, it uses uh, pixels in the image and sub-pixels uh, in the deformed image. It will track and match to find the uh, displacement and strain. So to be, uh, to be um, in a simple word, it's need to be find a similar uh, gray, uh, 
variable variations between these two images. So it starts with defining uh, the initial guess, where in your image, um, in your uh, before the deformation, we have to define your region of interest, and then in that region of interest, we have to come up with the subset. This subset is, will be used. This is the subset. Okay, the subset will be used to track the deformation. So once the film is moving upwards, it is deformed. It's already deformed, so you have to track the deformation. So for that, uh, the film must have uh, some features to track. So um, uh, so that it is uh, assumed that before and after deformation is the same. So for that, we uh, will be using a correlation criterion. So once the maximum correlation is found, it will position the subset in the current position. So the displacement is measured and then the strain is calculated. So there are many aspects that actually um, affects the measurement accuracy. So for my research study, I have uh, detailed out five, so which is characterized pre-processing and post-processing. So the pre-processing is basically in terms of experimental setup. And then the post-processing is in terms of selecting the DIC parameter. So for the pre-processing, the surface pattern, uh, it is very important because um, DIC works by matching and tracking, tracking and matching. So uh, for this film growing process, it, it doesn't have any features to track. So it is a surface pattern. Surface pattern can be in, in any form. It can be a dot or lines or any random patterns, but it must make sure there is something to track. And then um, certain uh, samples, they have inner surface structure. Certain, they don't have any uh, pattern. So you have to artificially create a pattern on the surface. And then the second one is the lighting. A uh, small variation in the lighting of your image will uh, cause error in your uh, DIC result. So uh, the sample should be brightened up with consistent lighting throughout the deformation process. And then the post-processing is the DIC parameters. So the parameters that studies was subset size, subset space, and also strain radius. So these uh, um, parameters should be balanced to get a, a good accuracy in the measurement. So subset size is um, uh, a group of pixels that will be used uh, to track and match. So it can be smaller or larger, depends on your image, depends on your sample size. So uh, if you choose the smaller one, less uh, subset sub, uh, pixels will be available for you to, for the calculation process. If you use the larger subset size, it contains more pixels. So it basically depends on your uh, sample size, image, and everything. The subset space is the distance between the successive pixels. So this is smaller subset space, and this is the uh, larger subset space. The subset size is similar, but just the points to be calculated will be different. So larger the subset uh, space, less the points will be used for the calculation. So basically, subset space is uh, it, will add, uh, it will reduce the image resolution and also will uh, fasten your calculation process. In strain radius is used to remove the unnecessary noise present in your displacement field. So usually uh, it's, it should be less, uh, the size should be less than subset size. Okay, the application of DIC in polymer processing. So few, uh, these are the two processes that I reviewed for my uh, research. So one is injection stretch blow molding, and the second one is thermoforming. So for injection stretch blow molding, is uh, it's a process where you produce thin walled containers for the liquid products. Um, basically, in that in the injection stretch blow molding, they reviewed, uh, they used the DIC to study the full deformation process of the bottle forming. So. Uh, in order to proceed with this uh, study, they, uh, they, they removed the mold uh, prior to the process. So the preform is uh, pre-sprayed prior to the testing, and then we investigated the flow rate and preform temperature. So the, there are the images uh, for the flow rate. The left one is the, um, the first one is the fl low flow rate, and the second one is the high flow rate. So at the lower flow rate, what we can see is uh, the simulation inflates faster than the actual one. And the strain value shows that the, um, uh, for the experimental value, the actual uh, the stretching was more in actual direction compared to the crew. 
And then for the eye flow rate, uh, the water shape was similar uh, for experimental and also the uh, simulation uh, process. <coughs> so they showed the biaxial stretching. And then the, for the preformed temperature, uh, it was just uh, concluded that the higher the preformed temperature, the faster would be the uh, uh, bottle formation. And then they extended the uh, surface to stereo DIC, which is from 2D to 3D. This is the 2D one, and this is 3D one for the hook uh, screen. So they did, uh, they studied on the uh, 3D DIC to to get some other information that is not able to uh, achieve from the 2D DIC. And then for the thermal forming, uh, thermal forming is different from the injection stretch for molding. Here we use a sheet to inflate. So in that um, uh, research, they used uh, to they. For this thermoforming, the thickness of uh, the thickness is very important. So all the research was based on the thickness, measuring the thickness uh, of the thermoformed product. So the first one validation of DIC. So they validate the DIC with the manual measurement, which is using a dial caliper, and then they found that uh, DIC and the manual measurement was comparable. And then followed by the uh, study on influence on of DIC software. So they used two types of DIC software, which is with 3D and also match 3 ID 3D. And then they come up uh, with the result that uh, the software doesn't influence on the strain measurement. And finally, uh, they did the comparison of the DIC with commercial thermoforming uh, simulation. So they used the information from the DIC, such as the amount of sagging and the different temperature, to simulate the uh, thermoforming product. Okay, DIC in micron research, which is in a film growing process. So this is the experimental setup. So before I proceed with my uh, <coughs> growing process, I make sure uh, that the, the sample is bright enough with uh, uh, lights. So we put uh, two fluorescent light with a consistent lighting, and then a pattern was created using a permanent art uh, ink, and then. Uh, the process is uh, recorded using a camera which is placed on the tripod to avoid any distortion. And then uh, the images from the camera is extracted and then uh, a DIC analysis once was done. So the challenge here was uh, the preparation of film surface. Okay, uh, we tried with many uh, methods to produce the film uh, pattern on the film. There are like paints, uh, uh, carbon powder, and also a permanent uh, ink. When we used the paint, uh, it was difficult to dry the paint on the film surface. When it's moved uh, upwards, it's, uh, it moves quickly. So it forms blobs uh, on the surface and you can't uh, see the deformation clearly, which will, uh, you can't proceed with the DIC analysis. And then we tried with the carbon powder. So the carbon powder uh, added to the film surface, but once it's flow, Hubbard it drops. So you are not able to see the deformation as well. And then finally we come up with the permanent ink. So it was uh, preferred because it deforms together with the film. And then uh, the, de uh, the deformation is seen clearly and it dries off quickly. So why the IC in film, uh, in film growing process uh, is non context strain measurement? Because it doesn't uh, uh, destroy your film surface. And then greater measurement accuracy compared to other strain gauges. And then it's portable where you can use a camera in anywhere. And then you can study the film properties from any angle. And then can be exhibited on planar and non-planar space. Okay, our, our film is in 3D, it is in a circular. And then it's able to assess the strain formation from dye until the film deformation. So you're able to get the strain progression. And then which will help us to come up with the quantitative correlation between film proper, uh, deformation and film properties. And then finally, the properties, the information from this uh, deformation process can be used for validation of simulation. And, so, and then finally, I'd like to thank the Resistance Malaysia and my supervisors, and also Ministry of Higher Education for funding my